What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Play with CJ. I want to do the 10 questions segment on the Edmonton Oilers. You know, obviously a team that has high expectations given their um, run of having the number one pick three years in a row, 2010, 2011, 2012. And I drafted three pretty high-end players, so, and acquiring other guys through other means. But uh, without further ado, number 10 is Dallas Eakins, the answer. They've obviously changed coaches a lot over the last couple of years, and I had a person on the crew here on a fair look, getting fired after one lockout shortened season. But obviously Dallas Higgins was a sought after commodity in the coaching world, so you know, bring him in. We'll see what happens. But like I said, I don't think coach was necessarily the biggest weakness on that team last year. Uh, number nine, what rookie defenseman will the Oilers see next year? Donald Nurse will not be up with the Oilers. He's not ready yet. You know, he's going to be one hell of a player. He needs to go back to juniors, refine his offensive repertoire a little more. And uh, definitely, you know, be a stalwart on the Canadian um, blue line at the World Juniors. You know, I think definitely getting international experience will help him. And I think another year in June. I, th- I really, realistically think he's two years away from the you NHL. Know, but when he gets there, he'll get there and he'll be a player for many, many years. Uh, number eight, trade for a goalie. See, here's the thing. I'm on the fence about Dubnik. You know, they brought in, was it two backups? So Barbara and uh, Richard Bachman. So, you know, really, Patrick Wise not walking through the door there. Um, but at the same time, you know, they drafted Dubnik in the first round in 2004. So, I mean, I don't know. Bernier is obviously off the market. I mean, maybe, uh, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to think of guys to to think about. But, you know, obviously Schneider would have been a good pickup, but obviously he's in uh, New Jersey now. So we'll see what happens. But I think that's something to watch, the, the trade market for a goaltender with the Oilers as the season goes on. Uh, number eight, it's actually a three-part question. Over under 50 goals for Hall, 40 goals for Eberle, 30 goals for Yakupov. So 50 for Hall, 40 for Eberle, 30 for Yakupov. I'm going to go under with Hall. I think he gets 40. Um, I'm going to say over for Eberle. I think he can get 40, too. I mean, I think he's a good enough goal scorer that he can definitely get, I think, 240 goal scorers would definitely help him out. I'm going to go under for Yakupov. Um, so in order, under, over, under. So if you're a betting man, another over-under. Uh, 80 points for Nugent Hawkins. I'm going to say over. The over under at 81.5 for the Nuge. I think if this uh, this offense is clicking on all cylinders, him being the playmaker that he is, I'm Sam Gagne stepping his game up and you know taking some of the pressure off him. He can uh, there'll be more scoring chances for him, and uh, I think he can definitely you know be a point of game for this season. We've seen what he can do, and uh, it's time to live up. I mean he's lived up to it so far, but he, I think 80 points is not a question for him. And like I said, I'm taking the over. Uh, number five is the bottom six were at the dam. Um, you know, they made some improvements. I like Jesse Juice. I know he's played for the Islanders. Uh, big guy. He's 6'4". Uh, you know, they got Boyd Gordon, former capital, Mike Brown bounced around a little bit. I love Ryan Jones. I watched him play college hockey at Miami. Um, you know, I think Smitty's not in the top six, bottom six now, excuse me. So there's something to look at. But, um, you know, I think that's, that's better than it has been in recent years. And I think that can definitely help them out in a number of ways uh, going forward for the season. Uh, number four, the, will Justin Schultz have a Drew Doughty-esque sophomore year? No, I think he'll be a very, very good defenseman for them. I think he'll establish himself and cement himself as their, the best defenseman in that blue line. But um, Drew Doughty-esque, I don't think he'll be in our Trophy Finals in his second year. That's just the way it is. Uh, number three, will uh, were David and David Perron with David and Goliath? Uh, David Perron and Andrew Ferentz worth you know acquiring. First of all, let's start with Ferentz. As a Bruins fan, I was at times frustrated by Andrew Ferentz's regular season play. But come postseason time, he brought it. And uh, he was a great fixture in the community on and off the ice. And really a guy that epitomized the Boston fan base and, you know, Bruins fans in general. And, um, you know, I'm really I'm happy to see him in a place where he can be a mentor and, um, you know, help teach those guys how to win. You know, as a Bruins fan, he helped, you know, us go to the finals last year and win the Stanley Cup two years before that. Um, so I'm really excited to see him, you know, and, and he's a Western Canada, Western Canadian guy, so that's obviously great. And Perron, I think, can really break out with these guys. I mean, you know, he'll have more of a supporting role. There'll be less pressure on him than he was in St. Louis. And I think, you know, PRV had kind of fallen out of, out of favor with St. Louis. And um, with Edmonton, I think he'll, he'll actually do well. And that could be a, really a win-win situation for both teams where I think Perron in a secondary scoring role can really break out. And I think PRV... Uh, I can really step up and say St. Louis. So I think um, both teams will look back on that trade success in a year or two. Um, that's the way I look at it. I mean, that's one of those classic win for both team trades in the making. And I think Perron can easily have you know, 50 or 60 points in, on a second line. If Gagne plays slow, he's capable of you split up 
uh, Yakupov and Hall, you, you, and you'll get Nugent Hopkins up there in that first line. There's really a lot of possibilities, and if I'm Dallas Seekins, I'm kind of playing fantasy hockey with these lines, um, you know, and, but I'll just look at a back check once in a while. It's not the, not the oils of the early 80s anymore, or late, the entire decade of the 1980s, I should say. Uh, number two, will Alex Hemsky stay healthy? No, I mean, just because he's never stayed healthy before. I'm actually going to look up his games missed right now. I love his game. He's one of the better offensive playmakers in the game when he's healthy. Unfortunately, he's not healthy more often than not. Um, you know, and he, he's just 30 years old. Jesus, he grew up fast. <laughs> remember when he was you know, younger with the Oilers. But, um, yeah, he's a great facilitator of the puck, can shoot the puck really well, can really help you on the power play. But, um, you know, I just don't see him staying healthy for 82 games next year. I mean, actually, he's only missed 11 games last year and 13 games the year before that, so there's that to go off. But, you know, like I said, it was career, he's had 66 points, 71 points. Um, you know, really put, I mean, even the last two years, he had 28 points in 38 games, 20 points in 38 games, and 36 points in 69 games the year before that. So, uh, they, they've really been in a downward spiral anyway, and he contributed a lot of that to his injuries. But, you know, I, I still think he's going to be hurt most of next year. I just, you know, I'm rooting for him to stay healthy. I like the way he plays the game, but, uh, you know, I, I just don't see it happening. Number one, playoffs! I think this team will challenge for a playoff spot. I think they'll definitely, you know, give them the new alignment and everything, but I just think they're a year away. I think everything will come together next year for them. But I, th I think they can sneak in. I just don't think they will, you know. What a team can versus what a team want. I think a lot of it will be the goaltending situation. They've improved on defense with uh, Brandon Ferentz, obviously. Um, you know, Schultz will take another step forward. I think he'll have a better sophomore year. Um, you know, obviously, I don't think, like I said, it will be Drew Doughty esque, but this team is just a year away. And uh, that, that's just the way it goes, you know. And I think bringing a new coach and staff to implement a whole new system may set him back a little bit as much like Eakins as a coach. But, um,. Better days are ahead in Edmonton. I think you've got a very, very, very good glimpse of that this season. Anyway, that's all this episode of the Power Play with CJ. Ten questions segment on the Edmonton Oilers. Stay tuned for more episodes throughout the offseason and beyond. Later, guys.